Welcome back to Live Economic News. Today, we're delving into a topic, the reasons behind the conflict between Israel and Palestine. But before we jump into this critical discussion, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, picture it as a tangled web of events, meetings, agreements, and wars stretching back through the annals of history. But here's the catch, no matter how hard we try, we can never fully unroll this ball of complexity. Why? Because every thread leads to another, and there's always something further back, making it impossible to capture the entire story in precise timelines. Where two nations lay claim to the same territory, Israeli Jews assert their right based on historical ties, while Palestinian Arabs argue their deep-rooted connections. It's astounding how these two brotherly peoples, rooted in common Semitic origins, are entwined in complex narratives, often found in ancient texts. While these stories are just that, stories, the question remains, who truly lived there first? The right to inhabit a land has been a contentious issue throughout human history. Earth, in its vastness, belongs to everyone and yet to no one, a reality marked by a relentless cycle of migrations, wars, and conquests. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict, rooted in the first half of the 20th century and exacerbated after the establishment of Israel in 1948, epitomizes this struggle for territory and identity. To comprehend this complex conflict, it's essential to take a step back into history. Palestine, a region spanning approximately 28,000 square kilometers, shares borders with Egypt, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. Despite 60% of its land being desert, it holds strategic importance due to its geographical position, acting as a crucial passage between the Middle East and Europe. Over millennia, it has been a coveted territory, valued for its strategic and commercial significance. Furthermore, the discovery of natural resources like oil and gas fields off the Mediterranean coast has added another layer to its complexity. This historical backdrop underscores the unfortunate reality War in Palestine has been a constant, spanning millennia, rather than being an exception. Understanding this context is vital in unraveling the intricate layers of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. For centuries, Jerusalem has held immense religious significance, being a holy city for Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. This religious importance underscores a prominent distinction between Jews and Arabs. Historically, Arabs, from the 6th century AD onwards, embraced Islam, becoming predominantly Muslim. However, it's crucial to note that not all Arabs are Muslims. The terms aren't interchangeable. In Palestine, there's a diverse population, including Christians and people of Slavic origin from the former Soviet Union, among others. The disparity in their historical narratives further sets Jews and Arabs apart. Arabs have a legacy of expansion, creating a vast empire and spreading their religion and culture over millions. In contrast, Jews faced continuous struggles for survival, leading to their dispersion worldwide. They often grappled with integration issues and were subject to segregation and discrimination, culminating tragically in the mass genocide during the Holocaust. Palestine's history is marked by multiple transitions of power, with various civilizations such as Israelites, Babylonians, Macedonians, Romans, Byzantines, Arabs, and the Ottoman Empire, which controlled the region from 1516 until the end of World War I. The 19th century, in particular, witnessed significant upheaval, shaping the course of events in the region. In Palestine, the majority of the population is of Arab origin, but there is still a small percentage of Jews scattered worldwide. Central to understanding this dynamic is the concept of Zionism, rooted in the mountainous region of Zion in Jerusalem. But we as Jews do take this into consideration. It was shocking to the world, but the world doesn't seem to take into regard the 75 years that every day, every day, almost you have Palestinian death and suffering. Zionism, an ideology that gained traction in the late 19th century, was championed by activist writer Theodore Herzl. It aimed to establish a Jewish society within an independent state, ending centuries of Jewish dispersion and persecution. The chosen territory for this vision was Palestine, long considered the promised land by Jews and often referred to as the Land of Israel. The Zionist movement envisioned the gradual colonization of Palestine, seeking financial support and international authorization for their endeavor. To achieve this, they established specific funds to finance land purchases. Large financial contributions from Jews in Europe 
and America facilitated the migration of Jews to Palestine, enabling them to acquire land in the region. Furthermore, periods of famine and economic crisis pushed Palestinian Arabs to sell their assets, deepening their vulnerabilities. After World War I, Palestine fell under the UK's protectorate, and the British without reservation favored the establishment of a Jewish state in a predominantly Arab and Muslim context. The 20th century witnessed a surge in discriminatory acts against Jews, culminating in the Holocaust. This tragedy prompted many Jews to seek refuge in Palestine. Under these conditions, the Jewish population in Palestine grew significantly. In 1922, they comprised 11% of the population, but by 1947, they constituted 32%, compared to the Arab population's 60%. This demographic shift heightened tensions. Arabs saw their territories gradually colonized, sparking clashes. Post-World War II, the United Kingdom handed the issue to the newly formed United Nations. In 1947, the UN passed Resolution 181, dividing Palestine into two states, Israel in Jewish hands and Palestine in Arab hands. Let's delve deeper into why 55% of the Palestinian territory, including the fertile regions, ended up in Jewish hands, despite Jews constituting only 32% of the population. The UN resolution partitioning the land raises crucial questions. It appears unfair due to several factors. Firstly, many Western nations favored the establishment of a Jewish state in a region dominated by Arab and Muslim majorities. Additionally, individuals of Jewish descent held influential positions in various countries, enabling them to exert significant pressure. In contrast, Palestinian Arabs were divided, lacking a unified voice. Furthermore, during World War II, the Arab world, to some extent, aligned itself with Germany, leading to their defeat. This alignment stemmed from broken territorial promises made by the UK and France to the Arab world during World War I. Consequently, a complex situation arose. When UN Resolution 181 was accepted, Arabs refused, leading to the birth of Israel in 1948. In the aftermath, Jews expelled hundreds of thousands of Palestinian Arabs from the land, leading to a humanitarian catastrophe known as Nakba or catastrophe in Arabic. This forced migration intensified after Israel's independence, escalating into a situation marked by clashes, victims, and enduring humanitarian challenges, remaining unresolved to this day. In the wake of Israel's establishment, neighboring Arab countries, united under the Arab League, launched multiple attacks on Israel. Surprisingly, Israel not only repelled these attacks, but also seized control of significant Palestinian territories, expanding its hold from 55% to 78%. However, 22% of the territory was divided between Egypt and Jordan. Egypt gained control of the Gaza Strip, while Jordan occupied the West Bank, including Jerusalem. This division, marked by the Green Line, became a focal point in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, yet it wasn't recognized as legitimate by the UN. Tensions escalated, leading to the 1967 Six-Day War. Israel, fearing an imminent attack, launched a preemptive strike, defeating the Arab nations in just six days. Despite UN condemnation, Israel retained most of the seized territories. In subsequent years, there were efforts to find a resolution. In 1988, the Palestine Liberation Organization PLO, declared the independence of the State of Palestine, gaining recognition from nearly 100 UN member states. However, the situation remained essentially unchanged, and finding a compromise between Israel and the Palestinians became imperative. However, Palestinian Arabs became increasingly radicalized, leading to the eruption of the First Intifada, a popular uprising marked by boycotts of Israeli products, barricades, and armed clashes. During this period, Hamas emerged as a significant player, an organization seen as a terrorist by entities like the European Union and the United States. The six years of revolt resulted in numerous casualties, particularly among the Arab population, prompting the need for a ceasefire. In 1993, the United States brokered agreements in Oslo, leading to mutual recognition between Israel and Palestine. These agreements established the Palestinian National Authority PNA, an operational arm of the PLO. The PNA gradually gained sovereignty over the Gaza Strip, which was relinquished by the Israelis. 
However, Israel retained control over Gaza's airspace, territorial waters, entry points, population registry, tax system, and military aspects. In the case of the West Bank, CIS Jordan, the territory was divided into zones, with varying degrees of control granted to Palestinian Arabs and other Arab entities. Israeli Jews retained military control, while the rest of the region remained under full Israeli control. There were positive steps forward, especially after the Oslo agreements, which initially appeared to pave the way for lasting peace. However, this progress was derailed as Israeli Jews continued to colonize the West Bank, CIS Jordan, and Jerusalem, leading to tensions and conflicts. The U.S. decision in 2017 to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel further fueled Palestinian anger. Extremist factions, particularly Hamas, responded with a series of attacks, including suicide bombings and missile strikes against Israel. In response, Israel erected walls to contain the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, segregating populations and worsening living conditions. The ongoing conflict has taken a toll on civilians, with innocent people often caught in the crossfire. Meanwhile, in the West Bank, internal divisions among Palestinian factions, notably between Fatah and Hamas, have complicated the situation. In 2012, Palestine attained observer status at the UN, allowing participation in General Assembly discussions but without voting rights. The conflict's impact remains deeply felt on both sides, with ordinary people bearing the brunt of the consequences. In recent years, Israel has witnessed a political landscape marked by division. The country has experienced multiple elections, resulting in a government led by Netanyahu, with a narrow majority and increasingly extremist and authoritarian positions. The population is sharply divided between secular citizens, supporters of Zionism, ultra-Orthodox Jews, and around 20% of Arab citizens in Israel, whose rights have been diminishing. In 2018, a fundamental law was passed, redefining Israel as the national state of the Jewish people, sidelining the Arabic language and legitimizing Zionist-style colonization. On the international stage, there are countries like the United States, which have supported and financed Israel, leading to significant developments such as the 2020 Abraham Accords, establishing ties between Israel and Arab countries like the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain. Conversely, nations are supporting the Palestinian cause, particularly Hamas, including Iran, Qatar, and Hezbollah. In the face of these complex historical and political developments, we are left with a fundamental question. How can lasting peace be achieved in this deeply divided region? We've explored the intricate layers of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, highlighting the challenges faced by both sides. If you found this discussion enlightening and informative, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. By staying engaged, you help us continue these conversations and shed light on crucial topics. Thank you for being with us, and we look forward to exploring more together in future discussions. Remember to like and subscribe, and until next time, stay curious and informed.